Thank you for being here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Marie Spaulding. Uh, my business is Living Felt. We love helping facilitate your creative journey with fiber, especially felting and needle felting. Let's talk just a little bit about what we're doing today and hopefully you brought some questions. I know so many of you are felting along and it's been so exciting for me to see your dolls. I know and I promise that once we get to the costuming portion, you're just going to be so excited and some of you already are. So keep at it and ask any questions that you have today so that I can offer tips. If you are watching the playback and you have a question that you want me to answer specifically, please tag me on Facebook, Marie Spaulding, or post the question to YouTube. It's a little bit easier to see because we're gonna get hundreds of comments in the video right now that are difficult to answer. And hey, we are working with All Living Felt Supplies and if you have any questions at any time, you can call us. We have a toll-free number uh, that's at the top of our pages. It's 877-665-5790. You can email us at customer service at Living Felt, and we'll help you work through whether it's a supplies question or a technique question. We're absolutely available. We're open Monday through Saturday, and always someone glad to help you and glad to meet you. Cool. So here's what we're going to do today, and I'm going to look at your comments in uh, just a minute. This is the little witchy that I made last year, and um, today we will look at how to add a little bit of color and detail to the cheeks to bring your dolls a little bit more to life. I'll show you how I make these little pointy noses. We will look at ears, which are simple also and hair, and I promise if there's time, I'm gonna squeeze in uh, working on the hands, which we started last time, or the first session. If there isn't time to do the hands, then I'm gonna do a standalone video so there's like a hand supplement we can insert in the middle and you can work on them if you're ready. And next time, we're gonna to get to costuming, and I plan to do, uh, hopefully we can do clothing in uh, one session and then bring our doll all together in the final, or we'll split it across the last two. We're gonna look at wet felting clothes and needle felting clothes both. And I'm reading, someone says, how to avoid a flat face as I add features. That's a great question, Deborah. we'll look at that. How to attach the head to the body and you know what darlene we do that later i'm not going to attach the head to the body until we get going on our clothing uh, stacy says the lips are the devil for me how do i know what's the right size nose in proportion to the face and um lips high excited okay good well let's look at these things uh, a little bit and I can touch on the lips because I know someone asked us during Wooly Wednesday and said that the lips and the eyelids were a little bit of a challenge. And, and then someone also asked the question about a flat face. So I want to point out just a few things and I'll invite you to watch back to the previous video, uh, which was part two. This is the little doll that I felted with you last time. And the only thing I did was take the mouth out of draft mode and attach the cheeks. So what you'll notice is that the face has a little bit of an arch. And all my dolls are kind of similar. Yours might be, you know, vastly different. Um, but you'll see how the face has a bit of an arch. What can help as you're building up the face and what you might recall we did last time was we inset some teeth right in there and it wasn't really teeth, it's more a gum line so that the lip didn't lay flat. And you might have skipped that part. It doesn't have to be drastic. You can put in a small amount. It doesn't have to be white. This guy has like a skin tone, the same skin tone is underneath just to kind of build up where that arch will be in his face. And that gives you something to put the lips on. I didn't put anything down below on this doll. That was the under chin and then the lip roll. And then I just sculpted this, you know, underneath the top teeth. So consider putting in a little mound so that your lips don't sit too flat on the face. And then the next thing I want to suggest is that when you're joining your cheeks and you'll recall that I left things, you know, in draft mode. If you really take your time and do that threading motion, which we're going to look at 
when we do our ears today, then you can have real nice smooth planes where the cheeks and the mouth come together. Because if you look on your own face, your lips don't sit flat on your face, even if no matter what the shape of our face is, like she's kind of a smash mouth, she's gonna be, I think, a new witchy, maybe a fat fairy. We want a fat fairy. Um, so she's kind of, you know, got an underbite, which is intentional. But even with that's the case, it doesn't look like her lips are just stuck on the face. So uh, I'm trying to read. I'm trying to read what some of y'all are saying, but um, I would just say, you know, play with that a little bit and experiment. Get good at the joining and consider adding some little under support so that you get the shape of the face that you want. So in the cheeks, we get the shape by adding those on. Um, the nose obviously adds dimension, but here is where people often get flat. And I would say, even once you have your lips in place, you can shove teeth up under there. And if you have to, separate it. I've definitely ripped lips off dolls, so that's okay. All right, so I am reading a little bit. Let me just put that up there so I can try and, and read y'all's questions. I want to be a good support for you. Now, we're just, let me show you real quick. Someone said that eyelids uh, were an issue and lips were an issue. And I want to show you how easy this is. And let me grab a piece of fiber. Uh, I'll choose a slightly, I'll choose a color that's a little bit stronger than these dolls, just so I can show you. This is all I do on the lips and the eyelids in general. It's really, um, I think, rudimentary at best, and it's what I call a fold. So let's, when you want to do the lips or the eyelids, you need enough wool so that you can build a little bit of dimension. And this is all I do. I take my favorite skewer, I fold the wool over once, and I fold the wool over twice. You fold them over twice and then start to needle felt it in place. Just get it to stay down. This is gonna be the under part of the lip. And what you wanna do, once it's tacked down, don't needle felt this too flat. You want to do some of your compression into what will be the lip area. And when you watch back to part two, this is gonna seem familiar. Now with an eyelid, this would just be tinier, a lot tinier. But it's nice to give yourself what I call a little shelf under here to shape. So before you go too far, and you've created this little shelf here, and this is going to be the top of the lip right here. Before you go too far, just play with it. Now notice I just pulled that off, and you'll remember from last time, all we do when we're making lips, we left this loose and this loose, is we pull this, and we're going to, this is too big for any of my current dolls, but let's put it on this guy, let's just pretend. We and remember that when you attach your lips, the first thing to do is to shove it up under the nose, for those of you who are just now joining us, this is just a revisit from last time. Shove it up under the nose and needle felt this area first. Then start to shape the mouth, but leave this part loose for the moment while you start to attach it to your cheeks. I even shape this part of the mouth and this part of the mouth and this part of the mouth with needle felting before I attach it to the cheeks. and. Um, if you're, I want you to give that another try and revisit what we did last week. And if it's possible, I might try and uh, record, uh, I'll revisit what we did last week and then see if I need to re-record that to show you. But if you're getting a flat face, remember to add some dimension under the mouth and then remember not to needle felt, don't needle felt the edges of those cheeks, the, the lips down until you blend it with the cheeks. Sometimes that flat face comes from smashing the lips on the face and then trying to put the cheeks on top. We are going to look at, we're going to look at coloring our faces a little bit. And depending on your skin tone, there's many different ways that you might go about doing that. It also can depend on the size of your doll. 
It also will depend on the size of your doll, um, maybe how detailed you feel you can get. So I'm going to pull a couple of my dolls in and I'm going to try and answer your question, um, Kate, when as I bring these dolls in. So this is a doll, she's kind of small, and what I wanted to point out is one thing I did for her just to start adding a little bit of uh, detail to her face, all I did was give her eyelids, I did her eyelids in a darker color. So this is, her skin tone is pale peach, and then I did her eyelid in peachy. So just a little bit darker, gave it a little bit of dimension. This eyelid is wool, and I just used our same MC1 batting. And we have been talking last time about how you might make a doll a little more feminine. And so I take a little pinch of the MC1, and you can just roll it between your fingers, tease it out a little bit, and roll it between your fingers. And then you can just put it right underneath the eye lid of your doll. It doesn't have to sit on top. Put it underneath, and you might find that it really adds a bit of sort of drama and even feminine, feminine, femininity to your little doll. So just tear it off and just needle felt it right there up under the eyelid. If you have too much fiber, you might be surprised at that you don't have to tear it off. You can actually like tuck it up under rather than tear off what seems thick in the width. So, you know, you can make it dramatic and let him let her, you know, eyeliner be really long or just leave it short. If you're afraid to tear this because you're going to rip it off, well, by all means, just bring in your little scissors and snip it off of there. And that can make a really nice difference on a little doll. So in her, we also tucked a little bit of gray, um, a little bit of gray right in the corner and then a little bit of brown underneath I can bring this girl into okay this is in focus for me now on my computer and she has a little bit of gray right in the corner and a little bit of brown underneath and then the big eyeliner yep and I'm gonna bring in a couple of other dolls for you to see well let's start with this little girl now she has she has glass eyes uh, and I did put white behind and then just a little bit of black under her eyelids. She has a little bit of color in the cheeks. I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. And then in her mouth, I just put dark. I didn't want teeth on her. So Kate had asked, do I sometimes put pink under there? You can do whatever calls to you. Usually, I'll just make like little teeth and then dark underneath because I'm not trying to show a bunch of gum. But if you want to show gum, then you definitely can look at putting the pink in there. Or if you want to make it look like they have a tongue, then you might put a little pink under there. And usually I find for me, that is just a little uh, sometimes a little more than I want to achieve so let me grab just a couple more dolls to show you uh, some skin coloring as we jump get to that section now this looks a little more extreme in my camera than it is in person but Jack is a very Jax is a very dark-skinned doll this is our espresso brown and so with him the things I did in the skin coloring or the details in the face is a little bit of black or dark dark gray in the corners of the eyes it makes a big difference a little bit of dark brown dark chocolate right in his eye crease and then for his cheeks I used caramel and clay blended together and I used clay on his lips so rather than thinking pink or anything on a dark doll, I wanted it to just look like kind of like highlights. On this computer, it doesn't look as great as it does in person. He has a little bit of dark under his chin here and dark in the nostrils. I always do that on the dolls. So these are just some areas where you might think of adding color. Let me get someone else for you. Let's look at Alda because she's so big and this will answer the question for Kate. So Kate asked, do I ever put pink under there? Now, Alda has the most pronounced teeth or individual teeth of any of my dolls. And so I did put a little pink in there and in her mouth I put a little bit of gray 
uh, brown just didn't look right. These lips are wool, wool color in her lips, dark in the, the nostrils really makes a big difference, but stay away from black. Try brown, try a real dark gray. Black can just be a little harsh. Um, and then here, she also has eyeliner. She has a little bit of shadow in the corners and she has some color on her cheeks. So these are the things we're gonna look at coloring and I'm gonna show you a few different ways you can do that. Here's Santa, same thing, different skin tone. Um, he's got some rosy in his cheeks. He's got some brown in his eye creases. He's got some dark in the corners of his eyes. And those things are gonna make your doll's face just pop okay so let's you know let's do this little lady since I've already started working on her and it looks like she's back in focus there's a couple of ways that I like to color the cheeks one is with wool and one is actually with chalk pastels or um, chalk pastels or makeup I usually would use on the lips over the cheeks um, but I'll show you how we do that so here um, Lori Trickler says, how do we attach the head? Lori, we're gonna attach our head later when we get, uh, we do that at the end. Okay, so this right here is Tulip and this is Rose in our MC1 line. What I do is take the skin tone of my doll, whoever that is, this is the Pale Peach, and you're gonna blend a little bit of this. So remember, um, we're gonna blend a little bit of the skin tone color with whatever you want in the cheeks. And for her, I'm gonna choose this rosy color. Okay, and what we do is this. Take off a tiny, tiny, tiny pinch. If you have any extreme little dots, I don't know if you can see that, a little extreme little dot, take those out. And what we're gonna do is create layers. So I put the rose on top, and I'm gonna take a thin, thin pinch of the skin tone and put it on top of the rose. And then we're gonna make a little blend. You can play with how much you want this blended, how red you want it to be, how much you want it to match the skin tone. Make a little blend just like this. <laughs> Elaine, my pleasure. Um, okay, so here's this little pinch, and then what we're gonna do is just split it in half, take half of it, put it right on the cheek, and see how you feel about it. For me, I just lay it down. This is too, uh, you can tell on your screen it might look better than mine, but this is too rosy. I don't want her cheeks to be that rosy or maybe that big. There's two things you can do. You can blend more, or you can tack this down and even put another super micro thin layer over the top. I'm going to just go ahead and blend it a little, with a little more of the skin tone. I had peeled part of it off. So what I want is her to have just little tiny rosy dots on her cheek. Just blend it a little bit more. Okay, that's good. We wanna give her like a little rose acacia on her cheeks, if you know what I mean, just a little dot. And then, you don't want it to run into her eye and you don't want it to, you know, be too big. I want it to sit right on the tops of her cheeks. And if you want a little more, just take a little more pinch of what's kind of the red portion. Um, now, with our fine needle, our 42 gauge needle, we're gonna poke. I always hold it flat. I'm doing very, very shallow, shallow pokes. I'm trying not to create big needle marks. And if you, allow the fiber to just kind of be tacked gently down, then you're not gonna stretch it too tight. If you have some lines you don't love, you can use your tweezers to pull them out or you can cover them with a tiny patch of the next color. So gentle, gentle strokes, vary the angle, you know, move your doll around so I'm not always going straight in. I'm often, you know, at a 15 degree angle even. You can get very, very shallow, 20 degree, 15 degree angle. Tack, 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 tack it down. And just try not to stretch the fibers out as you needle felt. 
that helps when you start in the center and kind of work your way out. So this is a super easy way to add like a rosiness to the cheeks. If it's too rosy, remember, all you gotta do is take a micro thin patch of the skin tone and stretch it back over the top. And this is how I always used to do it was I would do an under layer and then, then I learned to blend um, better. So you can always put a little bit of the skin tone over the top and cover it up so that it just is peeking underneath there. Okay, so then someone's talking about, does that help? So now she has like just a little rosy cheek and we can do that on both cheeks. So if you look at Santa again, you'll see that he has some rosiness in his cheeks, but the difference is for him, I used Tulip. And I know it might be hard to see, but he has tulip blended with his skin tone as opposed to the red. And not all dolls get that rosiness in the cheeks, but just spend your time tacking it down and getting it all nice and smooth. I'm watching for some questions. So someone says, for a very freckled doll, would you add freckles on top or would you add a freckle color under the skin? That's a really great question. I would try something like, for a freckled doll, I would try something like, um, this this is clay and hard to tell when it's standing all by itself um, but you could try something like clay and needle felt it in place and then probably go back and cover it up with just a micro thin layer so you know a, a, a big doll like this I mean or a little doll like this is not gonna have such big freckles but you could definitely make freckles on your doll and then cover it with the skin tone and that would make it a little more muted I think that would probably work Let's quickly look at uh, some of the other coloring things that I already pointed out. Let's set her aside and let's look at this little guy who's looking quite, he's looking quite bland and he definitely needs some rosiness in his cheeks. But what I have here is a pinch of our charcoal gray. We have three new grays. I didn't really think to bring one of those. Um, but what you can do is you just take a tiny pinch of gray and just drop it right there in the eye and then drive it into the corner. I'm gonna see if I can bring this up so you can see. All I did was just drop it on there. I can't tell if we're focused because I can't see that far. And drive it right into the corner. Let all that extra wool just follow your needle. You don't have to corral it. You don't have to cut it off. Just do that and get it in there where you want and do it on both corners and it adds such dimension to your doll. So here we go. Just drop a big piece in there. I mean, not too big, but drop it in there, tuck it in the corners, and watch what happens. Like, one eye compared to the other looks so much more alive just by putting that dark in the corner. And then, of course, you know, you can cover, color the eyelid I mean color underneath the eyelid if you want. You can even add a dark line under there. Now if you want to color the eyelids, what we said just a second ago is sometimes you can choose just a slightly darker skin tone, which I did here, or you can blend skin tones. So um, always you can blend, you know, blend something with your own skin tone to color an eyelid. So this is Latte, much, much darker. Um, if you're trying to accent creases and stuff, rather than jump to a, a solid color or a color that's too dramatic, unless you're just going for like a painted line look, always blend your skin tone with a shade that is just a bit darker. So here is our skin tone, pale peach. Here's a little bit of latte. Uh, Santa is latte, for those of you who don't know, his skin tone is latte, so he's much darker. Blend these two together, and then you'll have something you can do accent lines with. If it's not dark enough, just blend some more, and always put it on your doll to test first. Cool, everyone's joining us. So fun to have you all here. So let me see a stream of hearts again, so if we're y'all standing up who've already started felting along with us, um, meaning you've already started your doll in some way, maybe even tell us what stage you're at. Uh, have you made your head and your body? Have you started working on your face? Let us know where you are. 
Okay, so I've made something that's slightly darker, and in my hands it may not look like much, but when we put it on our doll, you can definitely see that it's darker. So if we want our doll to kind of look like it has a little bit of accent, oh, I see lots of hearts. Um, what you can do is just add a little of the darkness in the what would be maybe the creases of the eye. Sometimes in the creases of the cheeks. Notice I'm not stretching it. I'm not stretching it. I would rather tack something down and then do a blend with a color over the top than stretch the fiber out. And just adding that little bit can add a little, some dimension to your doll. Use my needle just to stretch it down. And if that's too extreme, remember that you can just put a little patch of wool over the top and that'll make it look a little more subtle. I'm probably going to play with this one a little bit. I don't know who this is. Oh, I think I might know who this is. I'll try and finish a few dolls with y'all as we go along. How would you make the eyes look elvish? Okay, so let me show you my little doll, Ona. And I did see a question. Let me see if I can address this one. Um, it says, so is the dark gray you added supposed to be the tear duct? You know, it's not necessarily, it, yeah, it's kind of just the corners of the eye. It's just the corners of the eye and just gives the perspective of a little more dimension. And it doesn't have to be as extreme as mine, but it just adds a little bit of life. So it's not necessarily the tear duct because I do it in both sides. It's just sort of the corners. You could also use like a rosy color, you know, or clay color if that seemed more fitting for you. Um, okay, good, body and head facing. So the question was, how do you make eyes look slanted or a little more elvish? And I would just say, you know, play with the, play with the eye lids when you get them into place. I love, elemental beings, fairies, um, and such. So this is my recent fairy, Ona. She has big buck teeth, um, you know, a pointy chin, and glass eyes, because I just love that foresty look of uh, putting glass eyes in. And um, her eyelids are definitely slanted, you know, at this angle. Um, so you might just play with the angle of the eyelids when you get those in place. And she has upper eyelids and lower eyelids. Okay, I hope that helps. I forget who asked that question, um, but thank you for that question. And her, you know, she, she's, she has kind of a unique, a unique facial shape. Um, but that's just how I saw her. Now her coloring is a lot more gentle. You just see, if you see her in person, you would notice it and it's probably a little bit harder to see. I know we have a bit of a shadow and it's actually from the camera itself, but um, she just has a little bit of coloring in her cheeks. And so I'd like to show you um, how we do that. And it might surprise um, some of you, but it's, you know, if you've been felting with me at all, you know, I have very, very few rules. One is don't watch television while you're needle felting, except if you're felting along with me. <laughs> and, and others are uh, that there are no rules, pretty much. So another way you can add color besides adding wool, different wool shades, is to use pastels or even makeup. I'm gonna just pull all this stuff aside and um, how do you know what size glass eyes to use? Judy, just try different sizes. I mean, I'm the, more the type to store more things than I need at the moment, so I get the right size. So what you can do, like if you buy eyes from us, we have we sell an eye size run. Um, so you could buy one set of black eye size run and keep those so you test them when you're making a doll and see how well that fits for you. Um, and then I'm bringing in a couple of just lightly slart slightly larger eyes in case you want to do something like um, Ona. One way you can color the faces of your dolls is you can use regular makeup. Um, let me open these so there's not a sheen on them. You can use regular makeup, eyeshadows, uh, blushes, and things like that. I would stay away from the metallics, which these are. These are metallics, uh, unless you just want that metallic look. But if you can go with something that's a little more flat, this is one option. 
But another option that I like are just pastels. Um, so you wanna play with these colors and see what you really like before you put them on your doll. And these are just chalk pastels. They're super cheap. We bought them for um, different kinds of workshops years ago. And the fun thing is that this particular box is open right here, so I rarely even open it. I just take my little brush. I use a, a makeup brush uh, or a cheap paint brush, and I'll just grab color right through the window here. So what I wanna suggest uh, is that you test these colors one, always have a paper towel and make sure your brush is clean. You don't want any color on your brush if you forget to, that you put something on there. Uh, the same, like I'll use a little brush. We'll put some on this little dolly here. Make sure your brush is clean or wash them after. And just grab a little color. Like I'm gonna grab some brown. This is like almost like a clay brown with a little bit of uh, rosiness right here. It would be nice if you had a doll that you were fine putting the color on, meaning uh, like a test doll, so you're not worried about ruining her. Even if you just make a little bead, uh, that is gonna be the skin tone of your doll and see how you like it. So just take this and you can tap it right on there and add some color. Now, for some of you, this would be taboo. Some people would be like, oh, I won't put makeup on my doll. Whereas, you know, some, some artists would airbrush <laughs> their dolls. So that's why I say kind of no rules. I don't have a lot of rules other than I think your art should be fun and it should be for you first of all. And that's a pretty easy thing to do right there. Just add a little bit of makeup to your doll. Can you try it where the hair would be here? Oh, that's a great idea. So Kate says, can you try the color up here? Oh, I love that idea. So let's do that. <laughs> let's put some blush in her head, on the top of her head. So like this color, you could see how pink it is. And woo, that's so pink. I mean, it's really, really extreme. So you can see that you might want to tone it down. Um, and the makeup really doesn't come off. So you're welcome, you know, to play with that. When I do lips, especially on a bigger doll, I pretty much do what we did a second ago. Let's use somebody else. Let's do this little guy. I pretty much do what we did a second ago, um, except I change the color a little bit. I do what we did on the um, cheeks. This is clay. I'll take clay and then I'll take um, some of this tulip again. Move this head over. a little clay and a little tulip together. I want a little more brown. It's easy to go too pink or too red on the lips, and maybe you didn't intend that. You just kind of wanted a lip color. Um, take a little bit of that, just blend it in your fingers. You can't really risk when you blend such small amounts. There's like no risk. If that seems too dark, then you might like to lighten it up even with a little bit of latte or a little bit of the same skin tone. I'm gonna try a little bit of latte in here. If I want latte, maybe a little bit of latte in here, just to kind of lighten it up. Yeah, Lois says she wouldn't have thought to use makeup. Yeah, makeup or pastel chalks. Absolutely, they work. You don't have to spray any fixative. The wool will absorb it, so I would just say go gently at first while you're learning to do that. Now this might seem um, kind of dark for a lip color, but I'm gonna put it on anyway. When you're doing over layers like this, bring your wool out, get rid of any impurities that you don't like, whether it's a fleck that's a little too white or a fleck that's a little too dark, and always spread it out a little bit so that it um, can almost be tacked down how you place it on your doll. Hi, Sonia says, better late than never. Okay, I know this is fiddly and small. And I'm just gonna put this like kind of right on my doll and try and tack it on the, the lips. When your doll is this small, you might want to use uh, makeup. This is a little bit easier of a method when your doll is larger to use the fiber on something as small as the lips and I can see a little black fleck in there that I'm not gonna want. But just remember 
that you can uh, cover it always up with another layer of skin tone so that it's a little more muted. And if you have fibers that you don't see, I can just take these extra fibers, and you can see this, I can just take what's sort of sticking into the mouth and sort of tuck them down into the crease of the mouth there. And just tack, 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 tack. So that you don't stretch the fibers. If it looks like you have a bit of a line going, just flick at it a little bit. And then we can add one final layer of the skin tone over the top. Someone said, oh, let me just, I'm gonna answer that question, Sharon, in just one second so I can watch what I'm doing here. Okay, so that looks a little, you know, a little extreme and you can see lines, which is, you know, could happen. Just flick your lines away and then retack the fiber down if you're gonna use wool as the lip color. And you can even go more solid or you can just cover it up with one more layer of your skin tone, a thin one. Or uh, let's go with, um, I know, let's go with the next color darker. We're gonna go with peachy instead of pale peach over the top. And that will just kind of mute it all down and, and make it look um, a little more blended and a little less extreme, but you're still gonna feel like you have color and it's gonna take away any of the really extreme color bits. I have a little piece of vegetable matter right there and tack it all down. Now the only other thing with this mouth that I would like to do that I think would add a little bit of dimension is to go ahead and put a little dark, you peel back that lip if you want to, so you make a little space and put a little dark right under there. And you can go dark brown or dark gray, whatever seems fitting, just to make it look a little ex more extreme for you. I'll just put a little bit of dark in there. You know, just play with this. I hope you will. Just play with it, have fun, experiment. You can rip the wool out, <laughs> put it back. And we used, that is the core wool that we used for the teeth. And if you want it to seem a little more separated, you know, you can drive a line into the, the teeth with your needle. And instead of you don't you have to put lines between the teeth but what you can do is go underneath and that dark color that you just put in there use a, this is I'm using my 36 gauge needle you could also use a 32 is you could just now start to give the teeth a little bit of shape just like that and it's going to add a suggestion of teeth even if you don't go in and drive lines down the lines of color down the top you can add lines like this and it's going to look a little more like teeth and that'll that'll show up a little bit better on the on the other video um gray in the eye corners is amazing oh there's so question okay so sharon said did you shape the area above the eyelids or is that dimension done with color so on this eyelid all i did was add color we did that just a second ago so the eye has a little bit of shape to it i'll show you this side already it is inset a little bit remember we made the big eye socket and we added just a top eyelid um, and so this one just has no color added in it and this one we added just a little bit of brown and then we put a top layer over the top to kind of hide that extreme coloring that we put in there. Okay, so is this helpful so far? We've only co colored the bottom lip, uh, but we showed how to do um, a rosy cheek how you might add some eyeliner to add color in the corners of the eyes. You can add color underneath um, and in the nose as well. So consider a dark brown or a dark gray over, um, over black. Black is just a little extreme. So look how easy it is. All you have to do is, the, the one thing about the nose I will tell you is don't put too much. You don't want to poke so far that it comes out the nostril, out the side of the nostril. I've definitely done that. You just want to tuck it into this direction, straight up what would be the bridge of the nose, and tuck it well up there. Adding that little bit of color really brings your 
brings dimension to your face where you may have felt like you didn't really have any. What about the pursed up mouth like a prissy teacher? Um, let me see. So Patty says, what about the pursed up mouth like a prissy teacher? I don't know exactly that shape you're talking about, but let me show you Ona again because I gave her some little corners to her mouth that might be of interest to you. So I've done very little on this doll. He has no coloring in his cheeks. I'm going to go for our homework. I'm going to do this when we're not together. I'm going to give this little doll some rosy cheeks and some coloring here and um, bring this doll a little more to life, covering all the things that we talked about already today. And let me see if I can answer this question about the pursed lips, and then I think that we should um, jump to ears because we also have to get to hair. And she said, what about pursy lips? Now, I don't know if this would achieve it for you. Um, I'm already lost who, who answered that, who asked that question. Um, uh, and I wanna answer a couple of questions here. So when she said about the pursed lips, I don't know exactly that expression you're, you're trying to get to, but oh, I wanna show you that Alda has just a little bit of extra a little bit of extra skin here and I did it in conjunction with the cheeks so whatever lines you're seeing off the mouth oftentimes they're gonna run the, the same way they do down the cheeks and with her I actually put a little roll just like we made wrinkles I put a little roll right there and tacked it on so it looked like she had a little extra skin fold so try and shape those lips before you tack them down and use something like a skewer or a real thick doll needle that's really strong. And when you go to shape the face of your doll, really pull on it. You know, really pull on it and try and get the expression that you're going for. And if you have, um, whether it's a book or a drawing or a photograph, just have that by your side and try and get yours to match before you tack them down. But a tool like this can really help drag the lips around to try and get different expressions. And be willing to tuck those lips, you know, tuck the lips and, you know, reshape them, open them, whatever you want to do, especially before you tack them down. Okay, so I'm trying to read a few questions here. I know that y'all posted um, a few. Can you make an O as in a surprised mouth? Sure you can, and most of mine are like, are already a, a little bit fixed, but let me see if I can do this here. Like, you know, when you're, when you're shaping the mouth and before you tack it down, you're gonna wanna shape those lips on the face um, before you needle felt them in place. So it's kinda hard because these are already attached. And they said, what about making an O? So if you're making an O, you might drive that arch up this arch up a little bit more, but these corners of the mouth, see mine are already driven up. You're gonna make that shape before you cement the corners in. Um, I'm gonna answer one more question I saw up here. Someone said they were having difficulty. Uh, oh, it says, when I add fiber to make lips bigger, I can't get it to stay. Did I overfelt? Luann, I would ask you to submit a photo. It's very rare that I see anything like over felted but um, I would like to see a photo and then I could comment better so you might need to post that after uh, another question came in and it said what about wrinkles do you add slightly darker so they stand out I may have missed it and Christy um, we covered that in part two last week but let me grab somebody real quick um, um, <laughs> Kathy um, okay so Here's just a here's a doll that we we brought in last week, and he has a lot of you know wrinkles in his forehead, and so if you want to, you can add darker colors. But I would you know I would try not to overdo it. If you put like super dark colors in, it's gonna look like they're stuck on as opposed to something real. But if you look here, I know it's hard to tell, but him he has shading 
under his lip right there. He has shading in these corners and shading under his eyes, shading here in the creases of his eyelids. And this might show up better on the YouTube playback, but the color is blended just like I showed you a moment ago so that it doesn't look painted on or too extreme. And that's the thing I would think about is making a blend so that your wrinkles, um, you know, look a little more natural. Okay, good. Great. Can we see a side view? Oh, sure. Of this guy? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Here he is. So, blend. You know, he, you know, he does have dimension. His face is very shaped, um, but definitely gets some colors in those creases. Good. Okay, so why don't we jump to ears, and I'm going to show you just a couple of ways to make ears. Uh, this guy has ears. Not all my dolls do. Um, so I will show that to you and then we'll get to hair and beards and stuff. Okay? Oh yeah, can I do a longer nose? Yes, you are right. I didn't show you how to do it. Let's do a longer nose and then we're going to do ears and then hair and beard. So let me jump to that right now. Thank you for the reminder. Okay. A longer nose is so easy, you're gonna laugh. You're gonna be like, really? That's all she does? Okay, so I love pointing, putting pointy noses on my dolls, and sometimes it's just like a, uh, just a big nose extension, but points are, are really fun for me. And it's so, so, so easy. So here we go. We're gonna take, you know, whatever's the same color as the skin tone, and we're gonna do what's called a cone. So some of you have seen me make a cone before, why don't I do it on, this guy has a, I don't intend for him to have a, a pointy nose, but he's a little bit bigger and I think that would be a little more helpful if you can see it on a slightly bigger doll. So we're gonna do him. He doesn't have a name. Does somebody wanna give him a name? He could use a name. Okay, I'm just gonna get him in place so you can see him for a second. And let me grab what would be his skin tone, which is latte. And so to make a pointy nose, I, I start with this shape of a nose, and then I'm going to put a cone on it. So some of y'all have seen how I make a cone. Here it is. Just take a piece of the fiber that you want, and you're going to have to guesstimate. You're just going to have to guesstimate how you think, how big you think it needs to be. You want it to be Doug. <laughs> Ginny says his name is Doug. No, not Ginny. He's like a Santa's elf. He needs <laughs> Doug probably should be his name. I like to not have too, too much bulk, but you do want this nose to be able to compact well. So you need enough fiber um, to give it dimension. It's easy to put too little fiber when you're trying to make something. It's more important to have enough that you can really shape. So let's give them a nice point. I'm going to use my skewer. Notice that this end is not a cut end. I feathered it off. This end I feathered off. This end is a little more loose and I'm going to show you why. So I make a cone. Wrapping it on the skewer. We're going to wrap it real tight. And you know what y'all? Play with this a little bit. Make a few different shapes. You don't have to get the shape right the first time. Aw, Jingle. Angela, I like that name. Definitely his name is Jingle. Okay, so I'm making a cone. You've seen me make this before on my basic shapes videos, if you've watched that. But here's what I want to point out. Notice that I am only holding tension right at the tip, that the tip is closer to my, the point is closer to my rolling hand, and I'm really holding that tension. Now, as always, I dry felt through my fingers a little bit, and I'm even going to go here. Don't take it off your skewer. Don't take it off your skewer. Don't take it off your skewer. I'm leaving this end alone a little bit. Don't take it off your skewer. I'm compacting this down. It's pretty firm under there. Don't take it off your skewer. <laughs> Did I say, don't take it off your skewer? Don't take it off your skewer. Needle felt at an angle. Roll your skewer. Don't just go in one place. Yes, I'm using my fine needle. Somebody tell me why. Why is she using the 42 needle? Someone's gonna say why. I'm not going down too far. I'm just compacting this first. Once I go around the whole thing, meaning I've gone, you know, around the full distance, I'm not, first of all, I'm not banging into the skewer. I'm going at an angle so that I'm compacting the fibers. Okay, so we've gone around this whole part. 
No holes. Stacy got it right. No holes. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I have to clear my throat, y'all. Hold on one second. Okay, so now with it still on the skewer, what I'm going to do is turn it around and I'm going to needle felt from this direction, but leave these ends loose. Don't needle felt this part yet. So first, just start getting it going up this direction a little tiny bit. Then I'm going to have you go right into the area around the skewer, just like this. I can't really show you my skewer so long. I'm going to cut it. Hold on. I'm going to fix this right now. There. Okay. So we're going to go right into, right down into the base of the skewer. This is going to firm up your shape before you take it off. You want to create uh, a little platform on which to mount it onto the nose. And you've got to go in this direction, otherwise your nose is going to be soggy and floppy. And this is really going to compress all of this. And you know the... I know that YouTube is kind of going in and out, or Facebook is going in and out, y'all, so I'm sorry about that. But we're just going to get through this. Okay, so now we're starting to firm this up and this part's still a little loose. It's still a little fluffy, if you will, like I could pick it apart. So leave the very tail end, you want the very tail end to be unfelted. You need a little perimeter. We're gonna attach that to the nose. And then this part, just start tacking it down a little bit. Tiny amount, you don't want it too hard. And now we have like a fairly decent cone. You want to push it off your skewer, don't pull it. Always push it off your skewer. So now we have this little fluffy ended long cone and it's fairly firm. It's not rock hard, but it's fairly firm. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get those end fibers needle felted down and always work like this. You don't want him to have a big indent in his nose. So tack it down a little bit and then roll your shape. And then what we're going to do, jingle, you're getting a nose, you're getting a pointy nose like you're like your Santa daddy. Okay. I know this, I'm trying to find the right angle for y'all to see, I'll move it around. Here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put this right on the end of his nose and blend all these fibers in. I'm watching y'all's comments come through. Still not started my doll. I says, wow, stopped and went back to upper lip. Weird. Okay, so just refresh your screen, y'all. If you can't see that we're on the nose pointy part, refresh your screen or refresh the, the Facebook page. So what we're going to do on this nose is stick it right on the tip and blend all these fibers down. Here we go. I don't know the, the angle is a little funky, so I'm trying to find it to see where I can show you and where I can see. <laughs> okay, let's see. We're going to have to go with this angle. Here we go. And I am going to use this needle to blend it all down into the nose right there. I kind of start with the top and remember our like little threading. And this is honestly, this is really long, but if I were by myself, I would just keep working this shape until I you know, was really happy with it. Uh, the dimension of it meaning. So I'm gonna turn them over and keep working on this. He's got tags. I am taking those off right now. <laughs> when I go show somewhere, I was trying to sh have a little explainer tag on it, how, how they're made. So here we go. We're on his nose. We're just blending right in here. So first we want to get kind of a good, just a good attachment going. And I'm going up all into this area that hadn't been felted all that much, but it, it was felted some. And we're just kind of blending it all down. So we're going to go underneath too. We have to get all that part blended under there. Go 
go down the, the length of it so that it's nice and firm. And then once you have a good attachment, and this is pretty good, it's not soggy in the middle, you know, it's not soggy in the middle. There are definitely some areas where it can be blended better. So get all those attachments in place and then you can start to shape it. Like if you want his nose kind of upturned, he looks like he has a Pinocchio nose, but I think he should have like a crook in it. It'll make him look a little bit older. And I'm gonna use a more uh, aggressive needle, like a 38 and start to bend and shape that nose so he has like a kind of a bend in it and a crook in it. And sometimes I don't put a bend in them at all. So there he is now. He has a great big schnoz. <laughs> and I would continue working that and shaping it and just blend it all in and go back and refresh his nostrils. But spend your time and really get a nice good attachment and get a shape that you like. Like maybe he can have a really upturned, like pointy elf shoe nose. Mm-hmm, a little mole. <laughs> it's a, a nose hat. Okay, good. Well, now you all know how I make my pointy noses. Let's look at ears real fast. And ears uh, are something I've kind of worked on over the years and, and played with uh, how to make them. And you know, our ears aren't really flat on the head, but they are kind of a challenge. And I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you might look at those. But let's look at, um, let's look at just a couple of ears here. Oh, here's a tiny, tiny, tiny ear. So you can even make big elfy ears on a, you know, on a tiny little doll and it gets a little, a little more challenging, but notice that they have a back. Um, and they have some shape to them and what would be like an inner ear. Let me grab, oh, let's see. Jack's, um, Jack's has some of my favorite ears too. I like pointy, I like pointy elf ears. They're not perfect, you know, they're doll ears, but notice that you can really create what would be like an ear canal in there. You might give it some dimension. It's attached here at the face and you can really spend your time doing that threading motion that I told you about and blending it in here. Um, and then it's nice for them to have a little bit of dimension in the back. And you know, just play with that. You might even have to add a little bit to lift it off the back of the head, but have as much fun as you want, you know, with the ears. And lots of my dolls don't get ears at all. They just get tons of hair. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. I'm going to show you a, a couple of ways to achieve it. One might be a little easier on a small doll and one might be a little bit easier on a big doll. But here's how I start. Draw an ear on paper. If you choose paper that has lines, then when you do the next doll, whether you want to size up or size down, you can count the number of lines. And that can be a little bit helpful. I am not great at ears or drawing in general. So you can look in a book or look online and it's hard to get too much detail into the felted ears, um, but you can at least get some shape and some dimension. And this is an example of just like a smaller pair and I just freehand, you know, draw the, drew these because I like elfy type pointy ears. Your pointy ear almost looks lip shaped. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet it does. Okay, so here's a couple of examples of little ears and I'm gonna show you how we get there. So this one, you know, is based off of this shape. You gotta have an ear lobe of some sort and a top. And this is just, you know, an even littler version for like a littler doll. And before we make these ears, I just wanna show you that the fun thing about this kind of shape, semi-pointed, peaked, and then this earlobe is really, it could go like this and be kind of an elfish ear, or it could kind of go like this and be a little more, a little more of a normal ear. And I'll, oh no, we just lost our focus. Focus please, Kim. There we go. Um, it could be a little more like this. So you can play with that either up or down and there's a couple of ways you can get there. I'll show you one way that's kind of easy. 
and where's all my stuff? I moved everything a few seconds ago. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to make some big, uh, big ones to kind of illustrate this, and then I'll just try and quickly show you how to do a little one. So this is just a long strip of the skin tone fiber. What I would do, uh, and play with this, like make an ear just for anybody before you make one for your own doll. Get all this stuff out of, out of your way. Um, make one just to play with the shapes and the models, the ideas. What we'll do, this is just, um, here's how long it is. This is the double, double the length. And this is just, like I said, my play sample. Take your punch tool or whatever tool you have, flatten the center, uh, flatten the center to kind of give it dimension. You wanna kind of compact it. Remember when you've attached your wool to your foam that it's better to peel it off than to just rip it up. Go back and do the other side. We just want the middle a little bit felted. And you can now just peel it off one more time. And what we're gonna do is take our skewer, and I've just cut my skewer, so good thing I have one thing prepped. We're going to wait till the camera focuses. It's not liking me right now, moving around. So what we're gonna do is take our skewer and we're gonna make a roll. So wrap it really tight around your skewer, really, really tight. Use your needle to make one single roll down the length of your skewer. And I'm gonna jump ahead here in a second. And then roll it again. That was just to attach it. Roll it again. And then needle felt that down. Notice I'm going, you know, just on the side of the skewer. I'm not banging into the skewer. And get that so you create a little bit of a roll. And then we're gonna take our skewer out. Mine's trapped in there. And now we have this big honking piece. So it's just a piece with a big roll on the outside and all the rest of this is loose and unfelted. But watch what you can do when you play with this. You take this and you start to shape it kind of like your ear. And you know ears have interesting folds inside of them. So you can kind of squish this around and start to play with what would be an ear shape. So we have some folds in here. We can needle felt these in place and create some dimension with them. We have this as the outer perimeter of our ear and we can even squish this together and make a bit of an ear lobe. So I'm gonna kind of do that on this big version and then I'll show you how to quickly make a littler a littler version for a little doll. I'm going to use my 42 gauge felting needle initially and all I've done is I've taken my big shape, I've kind of pinched it into the shape of an ear. It could be pointy, it could be semi-rounded, and what we're going to do is sculpt a lot of the shape into how we want it. So you can start getting those lines into place underneath. Don't go too far, you don't want it flattened. You can start to firm all this up now and get it to lay down. Go right into the side here and start to get the, you know, the shape that you want and round it. And generally, you know, make both of your ears at the same time so that you have the same amount of wool. So start to get this into the shape that you want. And then you come down to the bottom. Now this is especially good for bigger ears, not little ears, but you wanna come down to the bottom. And down here I have this roll, this roll, and all the inner stuff, but maybe I want a great big ear lobe. And if you remember how we joined the cheeks and everything, we did this sort of threading motion across to kind of blend those layers. So without even putting anything on top, we can kind of join all those layers together across maybe just the surface skin, if you will. I need to turn it. I'm using my fine needle. I'm just joining a surface layer. And then once you have sort of that surface layer formed, then you can start to compact it more and make it more and more dense and more and more dense and shaped. And if you still, if you feel like you still see a little bit of the um, folds in there. Remember, once you have it compacted down, you could always go back and put a surface 
uh, you know, a little bit of skin over the top. So use a good shaping needle once you get to a nice point. Coax all this wool to go where you want. And then, this is too, this ear is too big for this doll, but when we're going to attach it to our dolls, you're going to play with attaching it to your doll's head. Now, this ear does not match this doll, but I'm just showing you how you can start to shape a really big ear. And before you go too far, uh, play with it and put it on the head of your doll. Also, I like to have some dimension in the back, which is why I kind of felt the back a little bit. So when I do attach it, and we're going to do a small ear, I like to, you know, I'm going to blend and thread this part flush to the face, but I like to have a little bit of dimension in the back. So take your time and sculpt it on there, or felt this down a little bit more so it's a little more finished before you attach it to your doll. Many of you are making smaller dolls like me. So when you have a little doll, you might have a much littler ear. And rather than do that big complicated fold, um, here's an example, this ear might, uh, we said this, this ear might fit this doll. What you can do is just make a little pad of fiber, like a square. So you can make a little square. Let me see, I've lost all my, Oh, I just dropped it. Here, this is just a double, this is a double little layer. So this is like two layers or a normal layer of MC1. Make a little tiny pad of fiber just like that. Put your ear on it. I always do kind of like the reverse cookie cutter method. And you do want a little bit that so that you can roll it in, but it doesn't need to be too much bigger than your piece. Not too much bigger. This is the top of my ear. And then what you can do is kind of roll these shapes in. So roll that into a point. This one's a little more free form, but I'm going to show you how you match your shape. I didn't even do this part down yet. Keep your design close by. Roll this stuff in. Just roll, just scoop it in there and start to shape it. A roll helps you get a little bit of dimension around what would be the outside and get it generally going to where you want it to get. Notice the bottom is all loose still, but what you can do is put your shape, keep your shape nearby, pull all this fiber up so you start to form an earlobe. Pull your excess to be to be like this part of the ear because that's where we're going to join it. So go ahead and coax that wool around and then start to shape it. You can just put your shape right on top. This is what I like to do is put a shape right on top and then start to guide it. Follow that shape around so that you coax the wool where you want it to get. If you want to pick it up and work on it in your hand, it's easy to poke yourself. So what you can do is make two pieces and then kind of sandwich it in there. Sandwich it between the two and then just keep sculpting it and shaping it so that it kind of generally matches the shape that you cut out. Keep working on it and shape this uh, this bottom part. You see these two are starting to match. If you have one done, then you can kind of match whatever this other one you have done. Oh, did I have it backwards? <laughs> you can sort of match the other one. You just want them to be um, close cousins and you can put the two together and keep sculpting them to match. Get them, just get the two shapes to match. And if you want your ear to be more pointy, well now's the time to do it before you put it on the head. So a very pointy ear, this is loose right now so you can really get that shape going. Okay, so really get the ear shaped, get it as pointy as you want it and as firm as you want it, um, but leaving this part loose 
and then this is how we attach it to the head. Play with the placement. I want you to take your finger right now and put it on your eyelid, like in the corner of your eye by your nose, and then just drag it all the way out to the top of your ear. Generally speaking, the top of your ear is right about level with the top of your nose. And when I do an elf ear, I usually make it not this tip, but sort of what would be the curved tip. And I let their pointy tip go above. So when I attach it to the doll, I'm going to put it about there. And notice also how my, my ear is about a finger length back from my eye. Put it right on the face where you think you want it. Again, that's right about to the top of the eye. Take a really coarse needle, maybe like your 36 or 32, and then I detach it first where I think the ear canal would be. Right in there. Right where the ear canal would be. That's the part that I want to attach. I don't want to needle felt the whole ear down to the doll's head. I would rather have the freedom to sculpt it. And if you have it firmed, uh, a little more firmed and a little more shaped, you're going to feel like you have the freedom, uh, t the ability to do that. So I would probably needle felt this ear just a little bit more, but look at what we can do now. Now we can take this excess and if it's too much, then peel it off or trim it off, but we can take this excess and I know there's not a lot of dimension between the two. Let me tuck this under there and you see this is where it's joining the head. We can use, uh, you can use a fine needle or a coarse needle uh, to go here, but I'm going to take a fine needle and just start to attach it to the face. Blend, blend, blend. Gentle, gentle, gentle. We want kind of a slope. And then you can, so once it's attached and you've threaded it on there, now you can get in here and shape all this to where it joins and what that looks like for you. If it seems too extreme, you can always peel it off. You can, you know, go in this way and give it a little more of a slope. And if your doll's going to have a beard, well then, like a, a big beard like this guy, you won't even, you know, in the end, you're going to end up covering it all up anyway. So just play with that where it joins here. Pull the ear forward a little bit. Define your ear canal and just keep spending some time blending it to the face how you want it. If it doesn't stick up off the back enough to your satisfaction, if you want it to seem a little more rounded, by all means, just add a little bit of wool in there. Just make a little pile. And create what would be like a little bit of dimension back there and blend it to the back of the head. Depends on how big your doll is, how much hair you're going to have. All that stuff matters, whether you get into all this detail. If your doll's bald and people are going to see the back of the head, you may want that a little bit of more of a blend in place so that it looks just a little more natural and not like the ears just stuck on the head. Is that helpful? Okay, I'm waiting just to hear back from some of y'all to see. Um, hi, Benita, welcome, it's your first time. I am just waiting to hear back from a few of you and see how this, how this goes for the ears. And do you have any questions before we jump to the hair? I know you all are on a bit of a delay from me. Okay, I see some hearts and some thumbs up. I see, okay, good, that's helpful, very good. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so our doll dolls have some uh, coloring. Mine are all in different stages. We've added some color to the face. We've added some color to the eyes. We've added some color to the cheeks. Um, and so now we can look at doing hair and beards. Um, I have just a few tips that I want to show you on that. And um, we're going to look at a variety of different uh, ways you can make hair. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a few different dolls to look at. And hopefully that's just going to spark some ideas uh, for your own dolls. Oh, we didn't do the eyes, did we? Glass eyes. 
glass eyes. Um, somebody asked me about glass eyes. They're so easy. Let me see. Before we jump to hair, I promised, and all I need to do is find my little doll. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Okay. So we're going to, uh, just for a quick tip on glass eyes, um, nobody freak out, but I took the eyes out of this little guy just so I can show you how to do them. The glass eyes we sell come on a rod. We do have some that have loops on the back, but glass eyes come on a rod. And when you're doing glass eyes for a doll, Judy asked earlier, how do you know what size? And my encouragement is to buy black uh, buy a size run of at least like black eyes and keep them marked so you know what size they are um, and then you can try different sizes on your dolls these are not technically doll eyes they're animal eyes um, doll eyes themselves are pretty expensive to buy in glass and they're usually much smaller than you would think and we don't sell them we just sell basically like animal eyes if you're going to use blue then my encouragement is to paint the backs of the blue eyes white. You can even do the same thing on the yellow. But what happens when you put the blue on the wool is it kind of gets, the color gets lost. So just paint the black white with any white acrylic paint. Okay, so on your eyes, my only real hot tip or my first hot tip is to cut a very sharp angle on the wire so that it's easy to poke in the wool and I'm just going to show you that on a big one and then we're going to inset these little eyes back into my little doll. My head's all over the table here. So this is just a pair of channel locks, so wire cutters or channel locks and when you cut, cut at a very sharp angle like that so that you get a real nice point and can poke it into your doll. That's the only hot tip, and you don't want the wire to poke through the back. When you have your doll or your critter and you want to install glass eyes, it really helps to have eyelids. You can put the eyelids on before or after. You can put in uh, whites in the eyes or not. I tucked a little white, I think. I know I just tucked gray in her eyes because I wanted her eyes to take up the whole eye socket. And this little doll, uh, she has uh, a little bit of white uh, as well as the black, but a little bit of white back there to make her eyes stand out. And so it's the eyelids that are really going to help. So make sure that you put them in. We're going to get there, Greta, to eye, eyebrows. Um, make sure that you have eyelids either before or after. You can poke a real nice hole with your 32 or your 38 triangle needles. Poke a real nice hole for your eyes to go in. And then all you have to do is just push your little eye right into the socket. Now some people will glue them. Um, I generally don't because I'm always teaching and showing and so I always take them out. But all you have to do is just push them right in and bury them back into underneath the eyelid and put white in there if you need to. Okay? So we're gonna look at hair. <laughs> Thank you, Rodney Jean. Rodney Sir. <laughs> That's my husband on there flirting with me, y'all. Um, we're gonna look at hair, which does include eyebrows. And so why don't we start with eyebrows and hair uh, and then beards. So just a quick note on eyebrows, and I'm gonna pull in a few different dolls. She doesn't have eyebrows, so we'll, we'll give her eyebrows, although I don't know what color her hair is yet, so I usually decide the hair color first. So Jax has a little bit bigger of eyebrows, and I use the same fiber that I used for his hair. That's a, a one consideration, is use the same fiber for eyebrows that you use for their hair, and this little girl is the same. I use the same fiber for her eyebrows as I did for her hair. It's easy to make eyebrows too big so play with that and how it impacts your doll I have some dolls with no eyebrows at all when you get to a Santa or a bearded someone um, usually they're a little bit bigger and a little more pronounced so I will show you how to do a more simple and then when we get to beards in here I'm going to show you uh, how to do that Barb says, can you just use the beard, uh, the black eye for the pupil and the rest? Um, 
wool. I've never tried it. You could certainly try it. I used my broken needle to poke a hole. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little eyebrow on this lady. I'll go ahead and use brown. I won't keep it, but I just want y'all to, to see how to, how to do it. And um, the important thing is on an eyebrow, if you just use a fiber like this, kind of decide, you know, what that shape is and play with it, see how it affects the expression of your doll. Like I said, it's easy to make them too big. I wouldn't make it too rounded um, if you're using a batting. I wouldn't make it too rounded. I would instead scope, sculpt it with my needle. And again, all you want to do is kind of tuck it into place. And I'm going to show you how to do it with locks too. Just kind of tuck it into place. Tack, 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 tack. And now she's starting to look like the painted lady. You know, these eyebrows are too, are too strong for her. So match whatever hair color you're gonna give your doll. And don't put it on like too prominent. Uh, Sharon says, can you add it after the hair? I always do, Sharon. I always add the eyebrows like after the hair. So this is just tacking it gently in place and notice that with batting you can shape it. It's a little bit easier to do batting or locks than it is roving. The roving is so long. So just tack them right into place and first maybe pick the color of your doll hair. So let's look at some hairstyles. Uh, let's just talk through some hairstyles real fast and then I'm going to talk to you about attaching hair. These are my simple little dollies just to give you some ideas. Let's see. Just to give you some ideas for how you might attach hair. Usually we jump to locks. I love locks uh, for hair, but it's not your only option. So here's a qu little dolly. She's one of my favorites. Um, she has BFL uh, for Blue Faced Lester, and it's spelled L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R. We have some in the shop. And these, I've just tacked the locks on her head. So you can just put locks into place, and I'm gonna show you how to place hair in general. Um, but sheep's locks are an option. So all of these guys have locks for their hair. These are just like they come off the sheep, except they've been washed. So I absolutely love locks for hair. These are all from one sheep, this beautiful variegation of a Lincoln. Um, so start collecting locks. And when you see some locks you like, definitely buy them because sheep's locks go away. These are a few different types of locks for his beard. Um, so they're not, they're probably not quite as wide as they look on the camera, but um, they are definitely pretty clean. So gather some white locks if you're doing Santas and uh, old men and things like that. And then this here is, uh, these are some more locks on this little um, witchy poo. So locks for hair are really lots of fun and they can be natural like most of the ones I showed you or dyed like this um, and really playful. You can also use roving uh, or merino top. You can use New Zealand Corydell, merino top, whatever you have, that's a roving. And you can create these individual locks. Let me see, I have a big head floating around here. You can create these individual locks and then start to style your hair into fun ways. So I'll show you real quickly how we make these. You can use little bits of locks and kind of make a little hairstyle with a ponytail. This is another girl with a similar little hairstyle. She's kind of getting roughed up because I bring her so many places. But you can play with making hairstyles. This is Merino Top and this is New Zealand Corydale. So Merino Top is going to have a little more shine, um, but it's also a little more delicate. And let's see who else. This little girl has pigtails. So there's lots of ways you can go with this. The most important thing is really how you place it on the head. And then here's Mama. Her hair's a little more like mine always, in a bun. And this is just a nice variegated roving. And then lastly, you could just, you know, style hair with batting. Gave this guy a flat top. Style hair with batting. And just needle felt it in place. So let's look at some ways that you might um, let's look at some ways that you might apply hair to your doll. I have two uh, dolls here that we can use as samples. I have Granny and Wild Woman. 
and I like to use them to show really how the how the locks are put on the head and how to keep them from being um, too flat. So with Wild Woman, she is here to kind of demonstrate that we're applying a whole bunch of individual locks to the head, even when I show you like those little girl dolls. And you can add as much or as little as you like, but what we do is we really create multiple layers of locks. Can you post photos of the different hairstyles? Sure, Sharon, I, I can post some photos of the different hairstyles, or maybe I can go slower uh, and do a little video of it, but I'll try and do that. Uh, she has individual locks applied to her head, and I'm gonna show you. It doesn't matter whether you're using wool locks or locks that you've made. You want to stack the hair on in layers so that it looks a little more lively. And you don't need to have as much hair as this girl. But And if you're doing a hat, you need even less hair. Um, but this is to demonstrate that there are many different locks creating this hairstyle. And the same thing with Granny. So Granny has, let me see if I can show you her hair. Her hair kind of is parted on the side. And I know we're really close, so I'm gonna work on something smaller. And it's sort of tied up in the back. So, but she has lots of locks on too. So let's look at how to attach some locks to a head and um, how you might make your own. Okay, how I make my own when I'm applying the individual locks is I'm gonna take a roving, just a piece of roving, just like this. So this is how thick it is. Take some little pieces, depending on how big your doll is, and just roll it. You can roll it on your blue jeans. You can dampen your fingers a little bit. First get it kind of round, and then you can kind of roll it back and forth. If it's difficult to roll, notice how easy it is to roll across your fingers this way sometimes. Sometimes that's easier and I'm just rolling it on my phone. If you're making a little doll, we'll then make little tiny locks. So this is a finer fiber. Make them much more narrow if you're making a little doll. And you don't even have to make locks, oh by the way, but I'll show you that too. So this is a little, this has silk in it. It's a little bit harder to roll. I would roll it on my blue jeans is what I would do and put a little bit of moisture on your fingers and then that rolls a little bit more easily. So it doesn't matter whether you make your locks with roving, like New Zealand Corydell, Sliver, or Merino Top, or if you want to use locks. Here, why don't we use these locks? They're a little bit easier to see. These are Lincoln locks. We have those in the shop now. They're kind of long. So what you're gonna do is separate whatever locks you have out, locks you've made, um, or locks from a sheep, and get them so that you can use them. When we attach them to our doll, use a coarse needle, a 36, a 36, or a 32. These are our color codes, so if you're using someone else's needles, they might be a different color code. I usually do start around the face because that's where I'm gonna kind of define how my doll looks. Decide how long you want the locks to be. I think this might look good for like an older looking uh, fairy. Decide how long you want them to be. If you want the full length, you can attach the, the base. This is the cut end. See how blunt it is? This is the natural end. If you want it shorter, well then you can fold it in half and we'll look at that too. And I'm going out of the camera a little bit. Someone says, oh, okay. So when I attach it to the head, here's what I do. I want this hair to go on this side but rather than just drive that part in, I fold it backwards. Let me put her head up. I'm gonna fold it backwards. I'm gonna decide where her part is, and in this case, I'll make it right in the middle. Her part would be right in the middle. I'm gonna drive the fiber in, like right here. I'm gonna fold those under. If your fibers are too fine, you might need to switch to a finer needle. And if that doesn't work, if your fibers are too, too fine and they don't want to anchor down, well then you can take a tiny, tiny pinch, and don't do too much because you'll add a whole bunch of bulk. Add a tiny pinch of your fiber, your skin tone fiber, and put it over the top. I rarely do this, that. I usually just drive the, the fibers into the head. But as you start putting hair on your doll, you're gonna see why it was so important that your head be firm. And then 
we start to shape it like how you want it around her face. So I fold it back over and that's gonna make it look a little more natural. So just bear with me as I'm gonna add hair to her and I'll try and watch your questions as they, as they come in. I'm gonna try and turn her head up so she sits up for you. Someone says, oh, does MC1 work for hair? Well, it's not long, so MC1 is short. So if you want MC1 for hair, it's gonna be like the little boy doll I just showed. Um, so it could be sculpted, but it's a short fiber. Okay, I'm gonna watch y'all's questions roll in. I'm gonna start what would be kind of the top, the front, and then I'm gonna build up the other layers. And I just do this for personality. It helps me kind of decide how I wanna do all of the hair. So now I have that part and I'm gonna do this other side too. I'm gonna let y'all ask me questions. So someone's talking about making ringlets around a skewer. You know what, someone in our community posted that and I'm gonna try and remember, somebody posted exactly how they did it um, in our community. And then I think we did it briefly on a Wooly Wednesday, but. I didn't make time to, to do that today. That might be a good supplemental video. Okay, so here's this one and this one. So check this out. As soon as we start to get these hairs in place, look how much more natural it looks having a part and having a little bit of lift there underneath the part. So we just start, I like to just start to frame the face and then I kind of decide how I want the hair to come down. Um, and generally speaking, it's a lot easier uh, in the back to start a lower layer and build up, but let's build a little more, more hair on the side so we can get to know our dolly a little bit better. Someone says, okay, I'm trying to read. So again, I'm still going with this sort of fold under a little bit and I'm overlapping uh, what, I had, what I had before, or you can come straight down, but I'm gonna overlap so that I get a little more lift and that is just doing the, the fiber backwards first. So if y'all can't see that, let me know. If, if it's confusing on the video, let me know. You can also take advantage of the folded fibers to add a little more of a framed look. So that's starting to look cute. And now right here at the face, I'm going to fold some over so that they're a little bit short. And right here, like that, cover up what we had. Again, it doesn't matter if you're using roving, those locks that you applied individually or locks, you kind of want to build the hair up in layers so it looks a little more natural. And where, I'm gonna keep adding to mine, but where it's kind of sticking up too much, when you come at the end, once you kind of have it how you want it, you can come back and shape it and get it lying down. But it doesn't look plastered on the head. The big mistake is to you know stick hair across the top or just stick it on. Give it a nice fold, um, meaning give it a nice part by folding it under and play with how you frame the face. When you get to the back, what you wanna do is build it up like this. And you'll find that you don't have to fill in every spot. Um, so like the very lower layers, you can just tack on. Take your time to find your cut ends. And you don't even have to fold those under. The lowest layers, you can just tack on like right here. Find your cut ends, line those all up. Is this all clear? I see some conversations happening, but I know y'all are a little behind me. So I'm just gonna tack all of those down. I want her to have long, shiny hair. And then it's the other layers on top that are gonna kinda cover this. And then we just keep from here, we're gonna keep stacking up and filling in the gap. So like not every single layer needs to be covered. Otherwise it does tend to give them like a whole lot more hair than you may, than you may need. So I'm gonna look for some questions to come through. 
um, <laughs> Jareeks, that's sweet. Um, Y'all are so kind. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for helping make this happen. So I'm just gonna kind of work up this one little side so that you can see what I mean. And we don't have to cover the whole, whole, whole head. Thank you all for your support. How do you decide where to put the hairline? I just frame, the Sharon, what I do is I just frame the face first and then play with how I like that for the personality of my doll. For the back of the doll, I know that this is like the base, this is the base of my head and this is going to be the neck. So I just kind of pick a point right about here. You can always add more um, and you can always pluck some off. Hair's going to come off really easily. Let me put on one more or so layer just on this side so y'all can see how it looks. I really like this, um, this Lincoln, really cute because it's blonde and gray. I think it looks perfect for this older lady. So here we're right up to where I had the other hairs. And so I'm gonna, since these are all tacked on, to avoid the hair looking flat, remember you have the flip option. So gather up your cut ends and um, I would make this final little gap that I'm filling in the flip over. So I'm ne needle felting it on basically upside down. Just tack it all in there and really just anchor it in there. I haven't added wool over the top. Just drive it in with your coarse needles and then flip it back down. And then when you pull all the hair down, you can play with the idea of how much hair do you want her to have? How much hair do you want her to have on the, the side of her face? Oh, I like her. I think she's going to be like a little bit of an older an older mini me. <laughs> so I will keep styling her hair once I get it all in place. And you can just go right over the top here in places and tuck it down where you want it. Some people add hairspray and conditioners and stuff. I just leave that up to you. I don't use much of anything scented, um, any scented products. So I kind of you know, tend to stay away from those. But I think she, she'll look like a pretty um, older fairy with this light hair. And I promise that I'll keep working on her um, so that we can bring her all together at the end. How secure is the hair this way? Well, she said her dog got a hold of it and pulled, pulled some out. I would say that all of these dolls are not toys. And so if you wanted to, you could pull the hair out. This is not a permanent attachment and it wouldn't be good for a toy, especially not a dog toy. <laughs> That would be my answer. So like right in here, this doll's not gonna get ears. Right in here along the face line, sometimes I'll just go back in and tuck in a little piece and sometimes in a folded piece so that she has some shorter hairs uh, framing her face. So. Okay, good. All right, so let me quickly show you, we just have a few minutes here. Um, and so I do wanna show you how to do a beard on a doll and maybe what's just a little bit different about a beard and a mustache. She's not gonna get one. So let's jump over to uh, somebody else who might. Okay, here we go. Now, thank you for your patience. Uh, looking at this face, if you wanna add a beard or a mustache, it's really helpful um, to fold your locks for a mustache. So let's do a mustache first. And I'm just gonna lift this up. I don't know what else to do. I'm just gonna give myself a little riser here because it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to focus on my piece. When you're doing a mustache, the best thing to do is to start from the center just like we did with the part. So um, usually with a mustache it's not going to be too too bushy um, but what you would do is let me take half of this half of this for the mustache what we would do is needle felt it here in between the dip of the lips just like this I'm going to just needle felt it right into place there and fold it over Again, the mistake with a mustache is to try and just bridge that gap. So fold it over and needle felt the mustache to either side. I didn't really plan on this being having a mustache, but now this is pretty long. And if you want to keep and kind of bushy, 
if you want to keep the natural tip of your locks and this is too long, then back it off and either um, trim it down so that you have a little bit less or double it over. Don't be afraid to cut these if they're just not going to work for you. And that would be the same thing on the eyebrows. So all I did was initially put it on, see how I liked it, didn't love it. I don't want it to be too much longer than his uh, lip, but with locks on uh, either a mustache or eyebrows, it's nice to uh, kind of scooch them up and I'll show you how to do that, meaning you don't really want to stretch them taut. So anchor it in right underneath the nose and then bring it kind of where you want it, back this way. And then when you needle felt it down, kind of allow it to get a little bit of gather in it. So that you have a little bit of the natural curl. So you don't want to stack it, uh, stretch it tight. Don't stretch it tight. Okay, so then let's do this side try and find a similar color. When you do, if you're gonna use your own uh, roving or whatever for eyebrows and such, just, um, just make a point to make them both at the same time so that they're about the same length if you're gonna make your own fibers for those. So again, we fold it backwards first, anchor it down a little beyond where you want it to be. If your fibers are slickery, or too fine, use a little bit of the batting over the top. And then fold it back this way. I'm not loving this guy with this, this mustache, but for now he will do. He looks like he should be in a barbershop quartet though. And just allow some of the natural curl to come up like that. So his mouth isn't finished, but you can see how to attach it. This is kind of hard to look at, so we'll give him a little dark in his mouth. Uh, just real quick here, we're almost out of time, but I'm going to show you just how to do the beard. So let me tack this down just so he looks a little more realistic for the moment. Realistic, yeah. <laughs> Alive, a little more complete. When you're doing the beard, you're going to want to do it kind of just like we did the head. And there's a few ways to do beards. You know, a beard can, um, you can have a beard with no mustache, but you're going to do the same thing. You're going to build up in layers. So start with what you think might be the, the lowest layer. And again, flip up and do it backwards. I'm going to show you Santa here in a minute. You can just follow this line. Do it upside down. Someone says that looks like Doug, right? Well, this wasn't the same elf, right? <laughs> so we were trying to name Jingle earlier. Jingle, yes, Jingle. Jingle got a name today. <laughs> That's good. Also, with the beard, you can you can take advantage of a fold if you don't want it to be quite so long. So you can fold the fold them in half. But look, you know, right away we're starting to see a little bit of a beard and where it's, you know, kind of there's a gap here, then that's where you want to take your needle and go right back up into the chin and let it really be seamless. Something that can really add a lot of realism to a beard is then to go back and add some um, shorter lengths across the front. And I would just add as much uh, thickness and dimension as you want in your beard. But that's how I attach it, is I do the fold and I build up in layers. So if you look at Santa here, um, Santa, I used a variety of white locks. I used some that were short and crimpy and some that were... Um, medium curly and somewhere that were big and curly so uh, for his beard i used locks that were sh i mean his mustache i used locks that were short and crimpy and the same thing for his eyebrows and i brought his beard all the way up to his hat line and if you look under here i mean there's just beard for days so on a santa just be willing to you know go back and back and build them up or if you want your doll to have an especially um, bushy beard it can take a lot of layers um, and then a little guy like this, he doesn't even have a mustache, 
but I also went all the way up to um, his hairline and he has a few layers as well. So just play with that and make your characters like you want. Whoops, sorry y'all. Um, make your characters like you want and I'm gonna work on this little fairy towards the next time we see each other. This guy is gonna get a new hairdo because, oh wow, maybe they're a couple. I don't know. <laughs> They might have to be a couple, but I'm going to work on these two for next time. And um, we are going to come back together and do um, clothing on our dolls. We are going to do um, wet felting and needle felting. I'm going to uh, fade over here. We're going to do wet felting and needle felting of our clothes. We uh, look at both of those. If you have specific clothing that you want to do, I'll definitely look at um, how we might address that. And the final one, I hope to do clothing, wet felting and needle felting in one session. I hope so, um, if we can. And then at the end, we're gonna put our doll all together. So if we can't squeeze the wet felting of clothes and needle felting of clothes into one session, um, that would be our fourth then in our fifth then we'll finish so just before we go i know our time is up i just want to say i know you all are some of you are checking out thank you all so much for being here are there any final questions um that i can answer before we go do you put wings on your fairy someone answered yes you can we have uh, a wing video on youtube and we also have a download where you can um, get a variety of fairy wings to choose from but you don't need that we use angelina film which is in our website and um, hi beth said the first time seeing you live thank you so much i appreciate you all so much for being here and just helping to make this happen it's because of you that i'm doing this so um if you've just joined us for the first time, follow us on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash livingfelt. Subscribe so that you get all of our videos and you will be able to see when this one goes live. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash livingfelt. That's the main page that our Felt Along live broadcasts are. But we have an amazing community at fb.com slash groups slash friends. You can share your work. All week long, it's such a wonderful, warm community. We do a live broadcast currently still there on Wednesdays at two o'clock central, and that's always different. Sometimes we do techniques, um, and sometimes we do a lot of Q&A. So I know we are over, and I just wanna say thank you all so much for being here. Do you have larger photos of your doll's armature before it's being covered? Um, no, I don't, Kate. I, I didn't take a lot of progress photos as I was making my large dolls, because. I wasn't really making them to teach. I was making them for me, so I don't really have um, a lot of progress photos to share. Um, right, Stacy, save your heads. We're not attaching them yet. Uh, I like to attach them when we get back to the body. So it's very likely that we're gonna run into six sessions. I hope that you can join us for all of them. If you missed the live shows, they're available on Facebook under Living Felt in videos, and the better version will be on YouTube. Any, any final questions? Everyone's signing off. Are you going to show us the hands? Angela, not today. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I think I'll do a standalone video for the hands and I'm gonna plug that in the middle. So rather than do it live, I will film that and I will get it up on YouTube and then I'll see if I can load it up to Facebook as well. So I'm gonna get the hands to be ready to attach to the body and I'll do that um, outside of the live session since I'm afraid it's seeming hard to squeeze in. Um, okay, so great. I think you add the heads. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm hearting you. I would just love to stay and felt with you for the rest of the day, but I'll let you get back to your day. Thank you for being here. I hope you can join us next week when we're gonna jump back to the clothing, uh, wet felting and needle felting, and I hope to share lots of ideas with you. If you share your dolls over the next week or two or whenever, please put hashtag living felt, hashtag doll felt along, and we will look for you. Make it a great day. You deserve it. Treat yourself well. We appreciate you so much, and have fun. Bye-bye.